honoured to be marching today next to such compassionate people who are willing to spend their time fighting for the rights of animals. And yet, it's despicable that we are here today marching as women and men against dairy. It's despicable that a dairy industry even exists. To think that in 2018, we still live in such a backward society that people continue to think it's normal, natural and necessary to consume the baby growth formula from another species well into adulthood. But of course, it's not the general public's fault. Although the average consumer is technically funding this monstrosity of an industry, the consumer cannot entirely be blamed for their ignorance of the truth behind dairy. As consumers, we've all been heavily indoctrinated into a culture that uses and exploits animals however it likes. And of course, dairy is no different to meat and eggs in this regard. The system that keeps animals enslaved and animal agriculture industry pockets overflowing can only survive and thrive if the consumers who drive the production are kept ignorant. And the dairy industry has to keep consumers ignorant. It must. It's imperative to the industry's survival because they know that what they're producing and selling people is so devastatingly cruel, dangerously toxic, environmentally destructive and utterly insane that if people knew the truth behind dairy, they would ditch it. This is why the dairy industry is built on white lies. The dairy industry has an incredible marketing force and their indoctr indoctrination must start early. It must start with children to ensure their customers for life. When I was a child in the 80s, I was marketed to by the dairy industry every single day. I was fed propaganda that was upheld by the government. In school, I learned that dairy was part of the food pyramid. Imagine that, teaching a child who has obviously been weaned off their own mother's breast milk, that the breast milk from another specific species is food for humans. On television, I learned that we needed three servings of dairy a day for healthy bones. A glass of milk, a slice of cheese, and a tub of yogurt. All these years later, I can still remember the woman's voice, her exact tone in those ads. Growing up, I remember ticking up a checklist in my head. Have I had my three servings of dairy today? A glass of milk, a slice of cheese, and a tub of yogurt. As part of the education system, my primary school class was taken to a farm on a school excursion to meet food animals. That was the first time I met a dairy cow. I remember the whole class gathered around the sole animal as the farmer sat on his stool and talked about milk. I can't remember what was said that day, but I do remember the cow was tied up. She was restrained as the male farmer pulled on her teats and milked her in front of an audience. I remember we each had a turn at milking her each child was shown how to pull on the teats of a mother and extract her milk. I remember when it was my turn, I was nervous. I wasn't a child who loved animals. In fact, I was scared of them. But I knew that I didn't want to hurt her. My first yank of her teat didn't extract any milk. I was told I wasn't squeezing hard enough. I wasn't pulling hard enough. And my hand was in the wrong position. The male farmer put his hand on top of mine, he gripped the mother cow's teat with my hand in a strategic position, and he showed me the right way to hold her teat. And gripping my hand, he pulled hard on her teat until she squirted milk into the bucket below. He repeated this several times, and once I had the flow, he released my hand and I was milking her on my own. I giggled as a child does. It was exciting, it was different, and it was certainly better than sitting in math class. So I was happy to milk the cow that day. But I didn't know the significance of what was happening in that moment. I didn't understand the exploitation and sexual violence that the mother cow had endured. All I knew was that the feeling of her warm, wet teat felt like nothing I had touched before. It felt strange, and I didn't particularly like it. Funny how I remember that milking experience so vividly. I honestly don't remember anything else from that school excursion to the farm. I don't remember any other animals. I certainly don't remember being shown or told about the calves who weren't drinking their mother's milk. 
What happened that day was the epitome of the dairy industry's indoctrination. That seemingly innocent school excursion normalised the consumption of, ma of baby cow growth formula, normalised milking, normalised the exploitation of a female being. That day the industry said, look, there's nothing to hide, nothing bad going on here. Even children can milk a, ha a cow. There's nothing to it. And so the white lies begin. They didn't tell us the whole truth of how cows are forcibly impregnated, have their babies stolen and are slaughtered for milk once they're spent. That wouldn't have been suitable for children to hear. In fact, that wouldn't have been suitable for the teachers or parents to hear either. Because that would have been giving consumers information that would have made them think twice about purchasing this product. And of course, consumer doubt is dangerous. It's dangerous to an industry that's worth around $13 billion here in Australia. In 2016, there were 1.66 million dairy cows in Australia. In 2017, 71,000 dairy cows were culled. In the past three decades, Australian dairy cows have been selectively bred and reared to double their lactation. An average cow now produces 5,669 litres of milk every year. Overall, that's 9.5 billion litres of milk. On average, an Australian who doesn't yet realise they're not a baby cow consumes 105 litres of milk per year and 13.9 kilos of cheese per year. 34% of Australian dairy is exported, the two top destinations being China and Japan, and the revenue from the export of Australian dairy products is $3 billion. So this is an industry that has a lot to lose. And globally, the dairy industry is losing. The global market for plant-based milks is expected to reach 16.3 billion US dollars in 2018. That's up dramatically from 7.4 billion US dollars in 2010. No doubt the dairy industry could only dream of that kind of growth. But they're not seeing it because as the demand for plant-based milks increases, the demand for cow's milk decreases. What's become plainly obvious is that the dairy industry is panicking. They're desperate. They're clutching at straws. They're trying so hard to hold on to their customers that quite frankly, it's embarrassing. One minute, we saw the global dairy industry trying to ban plant-based milk as being called milk. And the next minute, we saw Irish dairy advertising cow's milk as plant-based. Yes, that's right, cow's milk is apparently plant-based and natural. You see, cows eat plants, so therefore their milk must be plant-based. Next thing you know, they'll be trying to pass off steak as plant-based too, because the cows eat grass, so guess that makes anyone who eats cow flesh plant-based? And this plant-based cow's milk is apparently natural too. It's totally natural to selectively breed animals to produce 12 times more milk than they naturally would. It's totally natural for a man to manually collect semen from a bull, stick his arm elbow deep into the rectum of a cow and manipulate her uterus while he shoots the bull semen into her vagina. Nine months later, still her baby, slaughter him, hook the mother up to a machine to extract her milk, which is then pasteurized to sell to adult humans. Totally natural, same things we do to almonds. <laughs> These campaigns and word games tell us everything we need to know. Dairy is dying and we are winning. <laughs> the greatest compliment your opponent can give you is to copy you. The Veganuary campaign has been so successful in helping people transition to a vegan diet that the dairy industry thought it would be a good idea to retaliate and create Dairy. The dairy industry said the idea of hashtag Dairy is to inundate Twitter with positive and informative content. Basically, people were asked to post something in celebration of dairy for each day in February. Well, I'm sure you can imagine how this genius idea flowered. You see, social media is a wonderful thing. It puts the power back in the hands of the people. We don't need millions of dollars for slick marketing campaigns. All we need are our smartphones and the truth. 
Any person anywhere around the world now has the power to take on the dairy industry and be part of a movement that is destroying it. The truth costs you nothing and it doesn't need a propaganda department. It just needs to be set free. And that is what the vegan movement is growing and the dairy industry has dropped to its knees because the only thing we have is the only thing we need, the truth. Remember, the dairy industry can't tell the truth. It survives on those white lies. Vegan activists around the world have been using social media for many, many years now. This is our home turf. So when the dairy industry decided to create hashtag FebuDairy and inundate Twitter, it really was marketing suicide. The industry created a mammoth opportunity for vegans to use dairy industry's own hashtag and campaign against them. And that's exactly what happened. Social media was flooded with the truth about the dairy industry, so much so that when you searched the hashtag FebuDairy, you saw vegan posts before pro-dairy posts. And now we come full circle. You see, these days the classroom is only partly at an actual school. The youth have an alternative source for education. They have the worldwide resource of endless information. Information from sources that don't stand to profit financially by telling white lies. They may still be taken to a school excursion on a farm. They may still have their hand held by a farmer and shown them how to milk a cow. But in the other hand, they hold the key to the truth. With a few clicks on their smartphone, all the white lies they're told are destroyed. I have first-hand experience at seeing the next generation outsmart the dairy industry. I have countless messages from teenagers and from children as young as 10 years old thanking us for helping them learn the truth, ask for guidance on how to go vegan, and many have successfully helped their parents learn the truth as well. As a movement, we are reaching the younger generation with the truth before the dairy industry indoctrinates them too deeply and blinds them with white lies. We're making sure the next generation knows that every glass of milk, every slice of cheese, scoop of ice cream, spoonful of yogurt and dollop of cream is the product of sexual violation, mutilation, kidnap, misery and slaughter. And no female on the planet would wish what happens to dairy cows on her worst enemy. So to every single person listening to this speech, I urge you, Use technology, use social media to relentlessly share the truth about the dairy industry until every dairy cow is free to live her life in peace with her baby. One day in the future, our children will look back at the atrocities committed by the dairy industry and they will shake their head in disgust. And the workings of the dairy industry will only be read about in the history books next to the other despicable archaic practices that we humans have evolved from. And future generations will read about the movement that liberated our animal cousins, destroyed the white lie telling empire and told the world to ditch dairy. Thank you.